Hello, my name is Casper Johansen and I'm your YouTube philosopher. In this video, I'm going to be talking about philosophy and sex. Since the dawn of time, this is a trilobite. And since the dawn of time, life has had a goal to reproduce itself. A trilobite was a creature who lived in the ancient sea around possibly 300 million years ago. This is a fossilized trilobite. So back then, this had to reproduce, have babies. This is a Tyrannosaurus rex, the dinosaur. And Tyrannosaurus rex, he had to reproduce himself. He had to have sex. So this video is about sex. So what did the philosophers say about sex? This here is a bust of a young Greek male. This was a sex symbol back in ancient Greece. This handsome Greek fellow, he was a big sexual symbol, symbol in ancient times. Here's his female counterpart, Nefertiti, in uh, ancient Egypt. She was a, a, an Egyptian queen, and Nefertiti was famous for her beauty. So she was kind of a, a sex symbol back in ancient time. So again, as I said earlier in this video, sex has been a big issue since the dawn of man, and still is. So the, so the philosophers who I'm going to be talking about in this video all had philosophies that had something to say about the sexual nature of man. You can extract a, a, a sexual philosophy from their philosophies. The first one is Friedrich Nietzsche. And Friedrich Nietzsche, he had the idea of a, a superman, a superman who was uh, beyond good and evil, who were beyond uh, normal convention, social conventions. Uh, he lived as he, he pleased. So uh, in Nietzsche's philosophy, we can uh, have a conduct to sex that anything goes. And you can do pretty much what you want to do. You can be, be a, a homosexual, you could uh, be into sadomasochism, you could be be into uh, a threesome or a foursome or orgies. Anything goes for the Nietzschean Superman. He can do whatever he, he wants to do in, in his uh, sexual nature. So for Nietzsche, we should live according to our, our desires and our passions. So go ahead, do whatever you please according to Nietzsche. Okay, the next philosopher is Søren Kierkegaard, and Kierkegaard, he's an, an existentialist, the same as Nietzsche. He's uh, famous for being one of the fathers of existentialism, and existentialism is a philosophy that's, that focuses on the individual and the individual's place in the world. So, but unlike uh, Nietzsche, Kierkegaard he was a philosopher who had different types, personality types. I have made videos about Kierkegaard's personality types. You can watch them and get uh, more knowledge on Kierkegaard's personality types. But one of the personality types that Kierkegaard has is the ethical person. And that is something he, uh, he thinks we should inspire to become an ethical person. And Kierkegaard's ethical person, he doesn't do what he just pleases, like uh, uh, Nietzsche's Superman. No, he has duties. So what Kierkegaard has to say about sex, well, that should be marriage. You are obligated to bring joy for only one person in your life, and you have to respect the sanction only of marriage. But if you get tempted, by other females or, or uh, 
uh, guys, uh, depending on on, the, on your sex, it's your your duty not to to uh, respond to those feelings, and uh, you have to you don't have to live according to your feelings. Kierkegaard has this uh, personality type, who's called the aesthetic. The aesthetic is kind of like Nietzsche's Superman in the way that they're both. Uh, driven by their instincts, their passions, their desires. But Kierkegaard, he has this personality type of the ethical person who has to live a dutiful, dutiful life. So you can't just go off and uh, have sex with anybody and do whatever you, you please. And in, in the relationship, you have to respect your girlfriend or your wife. That's what Kierkegaard says. If you have feelings that contradict these duties too much of the duty of being a good loving husband you should not follow them you should you should uh, you should uh, strive to, to being a, a better person and uh, fulfill your, your duties instead so that's what uh, Kierkegaard says to us about sex Okay, the next philosopher is Aristotle, who was uh, Plato's student. And Plato and Aristotle were one of these uh, ancient Greek philosophers. And what Aristotle, in a way, have to say about sex, well, he had the idea of uh, a golden middle way, that you have to strive towards a golden middle way. Let me just explain. Uh, he, he said you shouldn't be like the extremes of uh, the opposite on, on each end. For instance, uh, he asked, what is uh, courage? Well, if you're a soldier or some kind of a Greek hero and you just go head into battle without thinking, without uh, uh, being strategic, you're just uh, overconfident. And that would be your downfall. That's an extreme to be overconfident and to be too extreme in, in saying, I'm not afraid of anything. I'm just going to do, do this because I'm a hero. And that's overconfident. While on the other scale, we have uh, the coward that runs away from battle or somebody's being uh, mugged and he doesn't want to help. He just uh, run, runs away. That's cowardice. So Aristotle says you should strive towards the perfect middle. We can translate that to sex. What if I think about my counterpart during sex that is only about my counterpart's feelings and uh, his or hers uh, desires to do? That's all I focus about. That's the other person's desires during sex. Well, maybe that's a tad too much uh, sacrifice and too much emphasis on just the other person while on the other scale I say I don't care about the other person at all this is about me this is about my orgasm this is about what I want and you just do whatever you please during the intercourse well Aristotle say no the line must be something right in between of you trying to make it pleasant for the other person but not put too much in it, only focus on their pleasures, while on the other hand, not just only focusing on, on yourself. That should be a harmony right in the middle. That's what you can use Aristotle's philosophy for. That's striving to for, for a golden middle way in your sexual conduct and in your sexual passion. The next philosopher is Jeremy Bentham. And Jeremy Bentham was a British philosopher who was the father of what is called utilitarianism. And utilitarianism is about utility, like this tool. This is useful. Utility is useful for whatever you're, you're supposed to be doing it for. So in his philosophy, you should strive towards a useful conduct but something that's useful as to as many people as possible. You have to maximize the welfare in every conduct you make. So translated to sex, 
Well, if your action produces the overall welfare for the two people who are in the relationship, then good. So if you're only thinking about yourself during sex and only thinking about your own orgasm, only your, only your needs, and the other person loses their welfare or their happiness, then it becomes unuseful and becomes that you not it becomes that you do not maximize the welfare of your relationship. So you always have to ponder about the consequences of your actions during the sexual act during uh, according to Jeremy Bentham and, and find the the way when you do something you have to ask yourself do that other person will that other person become more will the, the other person have more joy and welfare right now if I do this during uh, sex or during the act of sex or the the foreplay or, or whatever you have to think about this according to Jeremy Benson how to maximize the overall total welfare of the both person who are in the relationship so that's the only pendulum. Emmanuel Kant. What did Kant say about sex? Well, he didn't say much. He said that feelings, and especially sexual feelings, were tendencies that man has. That's it. That's actually what he says about sex. And Kant was pretty boring guy. It is said that the locals in his city, they could uh, rewind their watch according to his uh, walk he had each day because he walked at the same time each day. So if they were in any doubt which time it was, hey, that's Ken. He's, he's walking here. So this tendency about sex, that's all he really has to say about sex. So. Can't, I'm sorry, you don't get to be much more in this video. Bye, can Well, we come to our last philosopher of this video, and the last philosopher is Martin Heidegger. What does he say about sex? Well, now it gets interesting. This is a, a DNA sequence. I actually don't know what it's a DNA sequence for or if it's uh, exact. But that's the side of the point. Take it for example that this is a DNA sequence of a, a rose or no, let's say a cow. This is a DNA sequence of a cow. Heidegger would say does this really stipulate what a cow is? This is a formula. This is scientific language of what is a cow. This DNA sequence. This is what a cow is, according to science. According to putting things on a formula. Well, for Heidegger, this does not capture the authentic essence of what a cow is, what a cow is being is and that's the thing about Haudegger you have to strive towards authenticity tis, or authenticity you have to strive towards authenticity to be your authentic self and live an authentic life you lose yourself when you think too much about what is this and that so he says to us about sex if you're trying to want to know how will I become a greater lover? How do I conduct myself during sex? Heidegger would say, say you lose the point. You lose the authentic essence of sex. Something happens when you put it on formula and these uh, self-help books, how to get a better sex life, how to get be be a better sexual partner, how to be a better husband and so forth. Heidegger would say we, 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 
we make it into a technique and in this technique we lose our authentic self, we lose the essence of what sex is about. And when you think about it, maybe sex is about love, authentic love. This has something to do with the other person that you see and you love or the other person who you are attracted to and you become kind of one wind with during sex. This is uh, authentic. So that's it for, for this video and I'll see you in the next video. Bye. You say, is it good to have big breasts? No, you can have too big breasts. It becomes too much. And that's the same with uh, the other scale. You can have too little uh, breasts. So the best for us <laughs> would be something in between. Uh, maybe not this serious. To, this is maybe not too seriously. Kierkegaard has this uh, personality type who's called the Aesthetic, who's kind of like Kierkegaard's uh, Superman.